Hello, my name is Mike Lowe, and I'm the coordinator, biologist, and fish guy for the uh, Decho Aeron program, which is run through the Decho First Nations. And uh, we're in the Northwest Territories. Uh, and the Decho, the Aeron program, is responsible for um, carrying out aquatic resource management. So what we do is uh, a number of different projects, uh, which are all community-based. And uh, we, basically what we're doing is we're getting communities to do their own research and monitoring when it's related to aquatic resources, so FISH. The acronym, it's a federal government acronym called the Aboriginal Aquatic Resource Oceans Management. So it's based off of coastal fisheries management, but we've, we've uh, made it apply here in the Northwest Territories. I'm really lucky and uh, that I get to travel all over the ditch. So, uh, previously, I, I traveled all the, over the Northwest Territories, but now I'm, I'm concentrated to the Decho. And our daily, our daily work is is pretty much a combination of carrying out uh, fish research and monitoring and water quality monitoring, sampling water, sampling permafrost, um, and and pretty much everything you can name it. Co uh, contaminant studies. So one of the big things we do is uh, contaminant work, looking at mercury and subsistence fish lakes in the Decho and then some of our other big projects are the, the Great Slave Lake uh, stock assessment work which the West Point First Nation and Kaladichi work with the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans to carry out the, the management work for the lake which is which is important. So day to day our, uh, our work includes a bunch of stuff um, mainly fish studies and uh, water quality work um, in the communities we uh, we do a lot of uh, fish research, so we're we're catching fish in subsistence lakes, which are lakes that are, are meant for food fisheries, um, which are important to the smaller communities. We go in there, we catch fish, we dissect them, uh, we analyze the aging structures, the bones in their ears to see how old they are, look at their sex and maturity, and uh, this is all helpful to the management of these lakes. Um, the other stuff we do is we, we do water quality samples, so we go to each of the um, tributaries along the Mackenzie and we sample the water making sure that it's as clean as ever. I was always interested in biology. Um, it's quite a long, even though I'm young, it's quite a long story. My dad was the, the biologist, fisheries biologist here for fisheries and oceans. He's a fisheries management biologist and uh, so I grew up working side by side with him, um, working on commercial fishing boats, traveling around the Great Slave Lake, traveling around Northwest Territories, um, doing all kinds of things, interviewing people, sampling fish, meeting researchers. And at the time when I was a teenager, this wasn't the funnest thing to do in your team, but I, uh, I really grew to like it. And I always had a, a fondness for biology. Um, so it took a while, but it, it stuck and now I'm hooked. Yeah, so um, it, it all started at Diamond Jeunesse Secondary School where I, I got my grade 12 and another a big influence was Bruce Green, who you've heard about. He was uh, an excellent biology teacher and definitely piqued my interest. Um, after that, I got a diploma at Nate in Renewable Resource Management and then Royal Roads, I got uh, a degree in Environmental Management. And then I also did some, uh, <laughs> I was so fond of science that I went to U of A and took a bi Bachelor of Science degree in Biology. And, I took all straight science classes right to uh, the 400 levels. And yeah, it's 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 going to the communities and um, and and combining science, Western science, with uh, um, traditional knowledge systems that have been placed in the area for years, and seeing seeing how they compare the similarities and the differences. And basically, they're the they're both knowledge systems, and they they both have the same objective, just a different way of going about it. So it's, it's really interesting to see those uh, comparisons. Oh, um, definitely. So I grew up, I wasn't the biggest, um, the, the reader of, of novels um, or, 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 non, or fiction. I was always reading nonfiction. So actually the biggest, one of the biggest influences were National Geographic magazines. My dad had uh, basically every, every issue um, going, I don't know how far back, but I would, I would always just school through. I wouldn't read the articles, but I would look at the pictures and read the comments. And there were uh, such great pictures in National Geographic. It actually got me into photography. And then some other ones are um, basically anything written on the Nahani River. Um, there's one by a guy named Patterson, which is 
just amazing to see these these people. They were they were basically naturalists at the time. They would uh, they you know they would canoe up these major rivers, pull themselves up, canoe themselves up over winter there, trapping and recording all their observations, and making notes, real detailed. And I know a lot of these notes are they're used by canoers or um, people working in the area. Oh, there's a great book by um, I can't remember the officer, but it's called Being Caribou, and he's. Uh, He's actually done a few trips. Him and his family recently retraced Farley Mowat's steps across the Arctic with their little babies. But the being caribou, they, they with their their young son, they uh, they 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 followed the porcupine caribou herd through the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, and they did it all on skis. And it's uh, it's an amazing story, and it it uh, it really brings you one with the nature, shows you like. You get past that science boundary and you sort of become one with nature. Um, just, uh, you know, take every advantage that you can to be outside and work with the people who are experienced. Work, try, go work with people on the land. Basically anything you can do to get it on the land and just uh, observe your surroundings. You know, you want to be the eyes and ears of the land. That's all great science uh, people are good at looking at their surroundings and and they might see something different in the surroundings and then all of a sudden you think well I wonder what caused that and you know sooner or later you're studying that and you keep asking questions until you get the answers happy national science literacy week